The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. WWE Developmental NXT. Hello and welcome to the Wrestling to the Max WWE NXT review for March 29th, 2017. And we are all here. Gary is here. Yes, sir. And Mr. Paul Leeser is here as well. Hey, yo. Yeah, I'm here. I'm right here. We're all here. And that's the, That's the thing. We're all here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so this is the NXT before uh, the TakeOver special on Saturday evening. And, you know, this is different than the previous NXT before the, you know, the, the big show or whatever. Normally it's kind of like this little preview thing. It's not even really a, a big deal. This one was kind of a, a hefty... Uh, NXT, as far as your main event, you know, kind of giving you a little glimpse of somebody we might see at, at WrestleMania show up, whether uh, we uh, particularly care for that person appearing or not. But uh, that's for the end of, of NXT. Uh, we had to start off NXT with the promised uh, triple threat uh Every person that's in the Triple Threat Tag Team Title Match, or not every person, they all appear in this match, but uh, one person of each team, it's uh, Mr. Dash Wilder, Johnny Gargano, and uh, one of the uh, Authors of Pain. Uh, I I believe it's Occam. Occam. And uh, basically... This this match was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, it didn't go very long, but as you expected, the other tag members got involved and caused some chicanery, including Mr. Scott Dawson getting involved, distracting, and getting Dash Wilder the win to have the revival look good going into the match uh, that's going to take place on Saturday. What do you guys think? Go ahead, Gary. Uh, you know what? I have a question before I even tell you what I think. The question I have for you guys is, all the guys that actually were in the match itself, were they the top guys of their tag team, or were they the guys who were kind of the minor characters of their tag team? Oh, God. Well, I, I know the answer for you is one of them, at least, definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, I, I, when it comes to like the authors, I don't know if they've done enough to really differentiate themselves as having one guy taller than the other. Uh, when it comes to DIY, I think it depends on preference. Um, and that, that of course for Gary, obviously is Tommaso Ciampa. I tend to lean more towards Ciampa too, although I think Gargano is the better wrestler. And, uh, for me, Dash Wilder is definitely the Marty Jannetty of his team. No doubt about that. Uh, Scott Dawson, I think, could be money on his own. Maybe not so much as a top guy in a main event scene, but certainly uh, a, a gritty, dirty, dirty heel sort of intercontinental U.S. title contender slash champion for, for a long time. Uh, just because his promo skills to me are much stronger. Um, and I think he sells better, too, personally. But. Mm-hmm. Well, Sean, any have, difference? Uh, yeah, you, you know, I think obviously Authors of Pain, they're not meant to really be differentiating themselves. Uh, you know, they're supposed to sort of be like your brother tag team, your, uh, you know, any kind of a semblance similar tag team that you get where there should just be a cohesive unit. Uh, you know, I think uh, for me, I'm, I'm the one that kind of goes with Gargano as far as the sort of every time and look they're both great i think choosing one or the other is kind of overly silly but 
I think, uh, you know, for for what we do here, I, I, the the gimmick with with Gary is uh, is always wonderful. But uh, you know, I, I go with Gargano as far as as far as that goes, and you know, definitely Scott Dawson. I don't think you can argue that he is the one that makes that team work. Obviously, he's the promo guy. He's uh, I think when you get in the ring, both of them are, are terrific. But uh, you know, Scott Dawson's kind of always been a little bit of a step ahead. I think because he's he's been there a little bit longer, so mm-hmm. you know, you he guys, has that yeah. advantage too. You guys aren't, you know, I, I think I run on cue here. The reason I was asking both of you that question was because I, I watched this match, and even when they set it up last week, I kind of thought to myself. What was the exact idea of why they chose who they chose to be in this match? And part of me thought, and realistically, this could be a situation where, hey, going in and take over, if one of them gets hurt, maybe, you know, they wouldn't want to pick one of the guys that's not, you know, maybe the star, or maybe that. It, it's silly. Sean, you're exactly right. And I, I kind of feel like it is kind of silly to say this or even bring it up, maybe. But I just kind of wanted to figure out why they chose each of these guys to be in this match. But in the end, it didn't matter because everybody was involved. So that really kind of is out of the door uh, when it comes to the end of it. I think the match was fine. I I think you got kind of a neat little preview of what could be taking place uh, at TakeOver Orlando. And that was the exact point they wanted to get across of, hey, this is exactly... Uh, an awesome, you know, few minutes you're going to get just to kind of a preview, get you excited, get you set to go. I think it was good. I don't think it was overly great. You know, I, I don't think it was something where I was like, oh my god, I can't believe it. But it was, it was good, and I appreciated the the work they put into it. Yeah, I think each guy played up their role really well, right? Gar- Gargano can sell like nobody's business, um, and re- just take such sympathetic bumps, and you really get behind him. Uh, Dash got to be just a giant dick, which is what the revival is all about, and then Occam got to run him over. So everybody's playing a role here. It's probably about the same rules you'll see whenever we get to the triple threat at TakeOver, and um, I'm really looking forward to this match. I think it's going to be surprisingly really great. Yeah, I definitely think it could be the match that we're, as the tag team title match has been for the previous I don't know how many takeovers at this point of hey the tag team title match is the one we're talking about at the end of the show Mm -hmm. so you know I I don't think that this is going to be any different especially with how you know uh, damn it authors of pain showed themselves really well in the, the previous takeover uh, that you know they aren't just there to be carried. So if everybody pulls their weight as you expect them to do, you know it could be terrific. So you know, but uh, don't want to get too much into you know what we're going to be doing on on the regular uh, part two episode. And if you're listening to it, I've ordered. Well, you you already heard us talk about uh, the takeover. Uh, so and then of course uh, I should tell you that at some point on Friday. You'll be able to read uh, at least, uh, what was Paul? Yes, Paul, my thoughts, and uh, Angel's thoughts on uh, various matches from TakeOver and the TakeOver Roundtable that we have. Of course, we'll have a WrestleMania Roundtable too, but that may not show up until Saturday at some point. I I don't know yet, but uh, it'll be there before the show. You could read it over on WTMNet.com, which you should always be checking out, period. Anyway, but moving on uh, into the next phase of this show here. Uh, they had a uh, video package for Hours to Black, again, being a little bit creepy here. And this is his sort of debut match against Andrade Cien Almas. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't see much different here in the little uh, vignette that they showed for him. But, I mean, if you want to talk about it after this match, you have Heavy Machinery with Tucker Knight and Otis Dozovic uh, against Mike Marshall and Jonathan Ortegun. Uh Basically here so that the Heavy Machinery can get a squash. Tucker Knight, obviously the 
showcase guy of the team. And I thought they he looked pretty good here. Um, I don't know about the whole uh, jumping around with the bear hug. That was a bit weird. But other than that, you know, I, I think everything else uh, worked here. And I think uh, this should be an interesting tag team that you get to see. Because you don't see this, uh, this kind of, like... Two big guys tag team very much. Like the, I mean, not they're not the same size of like authors of pain. They're they're more of a we're we're big, almost <laughs> kind of like an earthquake and typhoon. We're big. Right. Um. Ba I think uh, these big big man baby face teams are a rarity. Um. And these guys, I think they actually have a lot of in-ring charisma to them. I got to check them out whenever NXT came through Dallas before the last takeover. I was really impressed by these guys. Uh, they they can work pretty well for how big they are. Um, a lot of people around me also uh, were old WCW fans and like thought they were a product of the power plant for some reason. Uh, <laughs> and, and when you look at their look, I, you could kind of see that, I guess. But um, Tucker Knight just... Is he not the spitting image of Chris Harris to anybody else but me? Like, I swear yeah. to God, they cloned him. And uh, they're, <laughs> he, they mentioned amateur wrestlers, right? So. Uh, yeah, I think Otis is actually was either in line for the Olympics or competed in the Olympics or something like that, like national scene sort of stuff like that. Um, so I, I really like the, the passing bear hug thing i think that's a cool deal you don't get to see a lot of people do that and i know it won't always work but as far as these guys squashing people i think it's they got a real entertaining act right now yeah and you got to be happy to see you know these new tag teams come about and especially one like this that kind of does take you back maybe to some former tag teams but yet you know they're new and so that's really really cool and um i think heavy machinery definitely you know is here in proving that they can you know hang with everybody and kind of doing their thing so i mean i, I know i still got a lot to learn from watching them and kind of seeing the direction they're going to go but you know i think this does them some good favors here and, and showcases them in a really positive light so i was pretty happy with it yeah i th i mean this is sort of you know your normal thing for uh for what we see on NXT a lot, squash guys squashing guys uh, solves you you know your issue of of how you spend three minutes and you move on. But uh, we'll be interesting to see how much more we get to see of heavy machinery and we'll, how quickly they kind of move them up the ranks. As far as you know, what happens with this WrestleMania weekend? Who shows up? You know, if the revival are finally gone or or not? You know. Uh, so, after this, and thankfully this was a backstage seven because, uh, you know, this was kind of, Asuka, they obviously didn't have her say much here because, again, the, the English is a bit lacking still with her, but I thought they pulled it off as best they could. Uh, they, they do the contract signing very short and sweet. They don't prolong this at all. Amber Moon basically says that Asuka's getting too big for, you know, she's letting all the uh, winning and, and accolades get to her head, and that she has her a destiny, and that is to defeat Asuka and become the new NXT Women's Champion. Asuka says that Ember Moon isn't ready and laughs at her, uh, and then just walks off with the title, and then Regal just Tells Ember Moon, uh, good luck at TakeOver. Uh, so, I know we were talking big about the tag team division earlier, but this, to me, feels like the one that's going to steal the show. I really think these two are going to gel really well together. And, uh, you know, you, you can get a big head when you've murdered every single person you've been in the ring with. Uh, <laughs> and... It's really hard to think that Amber Moon has a shot, but, um, you know, she, I don't, with, with all the talk of Asuka not getting called up anymore, I continually go back and forth on who I'm picking for this. 
Yeah, I mean, you bring up the point of Oscar having the maybe the big head, and I think that also leads to us kind of seeing her maybe in that gray area um, because of the fact that I mean she's kind of really being a heel here. She's making fun of Ember Moon. She's just kind of playing that part of being very cocky, and, and you're really you know kind of set in here watching it and thinking, man, I, I almost want to root for Ember Moon because she's kind of getting picked on here. Um, but at the end of the day, you still love Asuka. You love the fact that she kills everybody that steps in the ring with her, and it's it's just fun to watch. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to take place in this match. I, I think, Paul, you're probably not far off. It probably will steal the show. Both these ladies are just excellent talents, and I, I think this little contract signing may not have been anything huge where they're fighting each other or they're flipping tables or doing anything like that, but I think they got their point across. I think Asuka did an excellent job for someone who... You know, let's be honest, is still trying to, to handle the English language, which is very hard to learn. Mm-hmm. I think that she did a great job in that. And uh, it maybe the longest contract signing, or, or at least they got to a point that I've never seen done before, at, at least in my recent memory. It may, probably has in the past. But the the guy that actually hosts the, uh, you know, the match, William Regal, actually gets to sign the contract. That usually never happens. He sits there and signs it and even says something else to Ember Moon. So I'm like, my God, this is the longest contract signing, but it's not very long at all. <laughs> I think they've made it a point, at least on NXT, to have Regal sign the contracts, too, if I'm not mistaken. Granted, you see so many, they all run together nowadays. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, I just I love that extended, you know, Sean. If you sit there and you watch Amber Moon, he's just staring, and, it, and it's almost like Wayne Regal's like, "You can leave now." <laughs> he's like, yeah. "I signed it," you know, like, "Leave." <laughs> so, right. That was good. Yeah, it was it, it was kind of awkward the whole way that he was leave, but uh, after this, this seemed to be a match that was a bit. Uh, one of those that, depending on who you ask, they really like this or they didn't. Uh, you know, it seemed like a few people on our uh, fa- on our Facebook group, you know, the Davidson Facebook group, which again you should uh, certainly go join. They uh, several people liked it. Uh, I think you know when you're in the ring with uh, Cassius Ono. Elias Sampson having his, I guess you could call it, best match is not a stretch uh, to say. Because it's not like he just has, you know, this incredible amount of standout matches that we need to go rewatch again. But uh, from a, from a uh, you know, Cassius Ono perspective, I didn't think this was the greatest thing we've ever seen, you know. It, but from Elias Sampson's perspective, I feel like he was sort of motivated uh, you know, he was quick to really show that urgency of making sure he wanted to win. He wanted to stay in NXT. I felt like Cassius Ono was just kind of doing that whole, well, I know I'm better than you. I'm waiting for that moment. And he finally hits it and, and gets the win. Uh, and then, you know, how you had the moment with at the end with Ono destroying uh, the Drifter's guitar and he cries. Uh, seems like we may see the Drifter in uh, that Andre the Giant Battle Royal, uh, perhaps, or he just shows up randomly on a Raw or SmackDown, you know, the Raw or SmackDown after uh, WrestleMania. That uh, could also happen as well. But what do you guys think? Are you on the side of this was kind of whatever, or are you on the side that this was actually good? For what we got, oh, go ahead, Gary. No, I'll just—I guess I'll go. Uh, From what I got out of this, I I didn't get super pumped over it. I think it was fine. I think they got their their point across because they wanted the drifter to at least have an opportunity to look fairly well. Cassius Ono, I think, gave him a perfect opportunity to do that. The back and forth was fine. I, overall, the match was not bad. Wasn't my favorite match, not really, but it, it was it was good. Um, it, with the talent that you got in Cassius Ono, you should have you know a pretty good match. I think in the end though, it's a you know 
it's a situation where you kind of feel bad for the drifter in a way because you know he's done. You know, you kind of have that. Oh man, I, I hate you. I want you gone. But yet now I kind of feel bad because now even your guitar is destroyed. So, you know, I think maybe that's what they wanted out of this. Maybe they wanted you to kind of feel that way. That way, if he did show up on, God forbid, WrestleMania or anything else, then you're kind of like, oh, good. At least he's got something else going for him. But, yeah, I don't know. Because to me, you know, the Drifter is a cruel joke. It just that's the truth to me. It just it's a terrible, cr- cruel joke. Uh, uh, much like you, Gary, I'm not a fan of the gimmick either. But it has gotten a lot of heat. And granted, I think most of it has just been go away heat. But heat is heat these days for WWE. That being said, I think they went about this match the wrong way. Uh, what they did with Cassius Ono, as far as just directly sticking him in the title picture right off the bat. Made sense in the fact that if you knew who he was, you knew he belonged. If you didn't, you're sort of lost as to why he's automatically been put in that picture. And he hasn't gotten a chance to really show you why he belongs. And I felt like what this match should have been was Ono showing you that, yes, I just got here, but I'm this giant badass dude. And maybe shouldn't have worked a 50-50 match with Elias Sampson. Uh, maybe this, I'm not going to say it should have been straight up squash or anything like that, obviously, but giving Cassius the majority of the offense and really letting you show why he belonged, I think would have been a much better use of 10 minutes here. I get that point. Uh, The one question I'll ask you is, do you feel like maybe they didn't allow that to happen so much because of the fact that they had to give, you know, this guy, you know, who they're trying to get rid of or get, you know, dump off this, the drifter, his fighting chance. Once he's done, he's done. And then Cassius Ono in the uh, takeover special is going to do just what you're saying. Maybe that's the big marquee. They want to showcase him there because they feel maybe more eyes will be on that. I mean, he'll certainly be in front of a crowd who's going to be much more familiar with him as you get that indie style crowd on the WrestleMania takeovers. And anytime they go out of the, uh, Full sale, you usually get those kind of crowds too. But I, if they do that, great. I just feel like the loser leaves NXT is still sort of a big step. It's still sort of a big stage. I don't know why you wouldn't want to give him that rub of showing why he belongs that much sooner. But I mean, more people watch Takeover these days than NXT TV, so you could be you could be right on that, Gary. Yeah, I mean, that's not a stiff that they've used lightly. They've only used it, uh, you know, two or three times. You know, Bo Dallas is probably the only other big one that I think a lot of people remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Bo Dallas was was a, you know, former NXT champion. He had gotten that gimmick to actually work to the point where, you know, people really people wanted him to go away, uh, but mm-hmm. they also liked him, whereas... With Elias Sampson, it's totally just, he is the male version of Eva Marie. Um, Right. And, you know, I think there are people that have sort of, like I said, I think at one point, watch, he's going to get people that are going to take a shine to him because he does get that that vitriol from the crowd that are going to say, well, look, the dude gets a reaction, and a reaction is better than none, so... Mm -hmm. You know, which is true in essence, but still, I mean, I can see Vince liking it just because it's it's the newest comedy character he can bring up and 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 use in that manner, I guess. And he control us, you know. <laughs> watch this; they're gonna hate this. Watch, <laughs> you know. It's all you know. He he has a fondness for music based characters too, which I mean, if you've watched wrestling since the eighties. You'll you'll know that too. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say Honky Tonk Man's a uh, much better wrestler than Elias Samson, but you know, it's hard uh, to compare. But that's another right, conversation. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, who knows if Elias Samson will ever touch a title? Uh, but hey, we'll see. But uh, you know, that is your. NXT, 
I still get weirded out with the Casasona wearing the Dream Team knockoff jersey, but you know, whatever works. Obviously, they want to hide his physique, and that's fine. But just it's funny. So when I see it, I just yeah. I can't help but look at that and go, oh well, I know where that's from. <laughs> It's true. I, I'm still having an issue too with that. I mean, I, I I think to myself, you know, this guy's cool and all, but his gear does not really overwhelmingly get no. I mean, it's not like they have Kevin Owens out there in tights either, right? So. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, but I, I think a t-shirt. I I don't know why a t-shirt kind of works better, maybe for me. I don't know. I, I gotta I get over it. I think they want to make it a little bit different from Kevin Owens, right? Like they don't want him in the the basketball shorts and the shirt. They want him in the basketball jersey and the shorts. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's what he's been wrestling in since he got back on the indie scene, too. Right? Yeah. That's true. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, NXT for us tonight, but guys, uh, just to let everybody know to make sure you don't forget. And Sean has already told you this. You need to focus. If you want to hear us do the, uh, takeover, uh, Orlando, re- you know, preview, uh, yeah, that thing, you make sure you go check out episode 240 part two of wrestling to the max. If you've already heard it, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, but if not, and, and this is your kind of leeway into it, make sure you go check that out. That'll be one of the first things we do on the show. So we'll give you all our predictions on everything that's going to happen at NXT TakeOver Orlando. Plus, on that same episode, you're getting all our WrestleMania 33 picks. That's right. We we're excited about doing it. We're going to finally give you our thoughts, everything that we finally have to put a cap on when it comes to WrestleMania 33. And, of course, you know, we'll also give you some great news topics that have been happening this past week, so you don't want to miss this episode. Of course, we'll also throw some impact in there as well. So you, it's, it's a packed episode. You don't want to miss that. If you haven't already listened to it, go check it out. And the best way to go check it out is, of course, go check out W2Mnet.com. That's the place where all our podcasts are. And, of course, all the great written reviews and, of course, all a lot of other great columns are. Plus, don't forget, go subscribe to Wrestling to the Max if you haven't done that yet. Whether it's iTunes or Stitch or wherever you listen to podcasts, go do that now. But until we catch up with you guys next time, if you're not living life to the max... Not living life at all. You know it. Please. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.